Alison Foolish. Mr Hosey, it's a pleasure to see you in the chair. It will come as no surprise um, to anybody in this place that emergency services are feeling stretched. It is an extremely challenging time for them operating within the constraints of nearly a decade of austerity, and that is the context in which we come to this debate today. And the link between austerity and different types of crime has been well established, um, and we're, all of this is operating in the global context of an increased risk of terrorist attacks, uh, with forces across the UK also now preparing for a no-deal Brexit. It's a perfect storm which can only be remedied with sustained investment uh, by the UK government. The Scottish Government have been instrumental in ensuring that Scotland is protected from the austerity cuts that emergency services have faced in the rest of the UK. Now, we do not have um, in the Scottish Parliament all the powers that we require to in increase our revenues in the way that my colleagues and I would like to see. But we ca what we can do is make spending decisions which lead to much better outcomes for the people of Scotland. Police numbers in Scotland are up over 5% since the SNP took power in Holy uh, Holyrood in 2007, despite the wider context of that near, near decade uh, of austerity cuts from the UK government. In the same time period, police numbers in England and Wales are down nearly 14%. And the headcount um, in Scotland uh, is, is 17,175, which is still uh, 941 full-time equivalent police officers um, and a 5.8% 5 5 more than the figure we inherited in coming into office. And that's quite significant. And in September 2018, there were 32 officers per 10,000 in Scotland, uh, compared to 21 officers per 10,000 population in England and Wales. And that reflects not only um, our geography, I suppose, but it, it reflects um, investment in our service and protecting that service. Because if it isn't um, protected in that same way, you see the issues that have emerged in England around crime, around knife crime and other issues as well. Um, the Scottish Government uh, do not have the powers to mitigate absolutely everything, uh, Mr Hosey, and the emergency services are increasingly concerned about the impact of leaving the EU. Police Scotland have said that a no-deal Brexit could have numerous consequences, such as officers being deployed elsewhere and a considerable risk of harm to the public if there are instance, incidences such as civil unrest. And nobody wants to see that, Mr Hosey, particularly not in Scotland where we didn't vote for Brexit. But the reality is we are at the very end um, of the supply chain uh, for many things. And if supplies can start to run out, that could have a significant impact on civil unrest. I'm absolutely appalled that our emergency services are having to squander public resources preparing for that kind of instance and other eventualities associated with, with crashing out of the EU without a deal. And it's entirely within this government's deal, uh, gift to take no deal off the table and offer some reassurances to those in the front line that this catastrophe can be avoided. And this government has allowed internal politics within the Tory party to escape into the lives of ordinary citizens. And it's Scottish taxpayers and Scottish citizens that are pay picking up the tab for it. Mr Hosey, Scotland has its own distinct challenges, which must be met by our emergency services, such as a diverse geographical landscape uh, and varying uh, challenges within uh, our cities and our towns in terms of how they respond uh, to incidents. We have our own cultural challenges and, our, and a separate legal system, of course, as well. But our police force has in good faith acknowledged that there may be a need to provide mutual assistance to other forces in the UK should that be required. But the only circumstances in which this would be necessary as a result of Brexit is if the Prime Minister continues uh, her rec reckless course towards a no deal cliff edge. There are challenges as well, uh, particularly in funding of fire and rescue services. And I say that, Mr Hosey, as a, a former councillor who sat on the Strathclyde uh, Fire Board. Um, when it was in existence before it was merged into the single services. And there were very good and legitimate reasons for doing that. Um, the, the pooling and sharing resources, as, as many um, would like to, to see that kind of thing, made sense for that service. And it meant a, a changing nature and, and challenges for that service in coming together as one. Um, but there is nobody now, I think, that would, that would change it back. And there was broad cross-party agreement for doing so also. And one of the benefits of that service has been um, for fire and rescue services is the ability to adapt to the changing nature of the fire service. And FB, FBU figures that I found recently said that non-fire rescues uh, now outnumber fire rescues quite considerably. And in 2017-2018, over 3,000 rescues were non-fire incidents compared to around 500 from, from fires themselves. And before the uh, Strathclyde uh, board was dissolved, they made considerable in investment in a state-of-the-art training centre in Cambus Lang, just outside of Glasgow. And I would recommend anybody who, has, who can to, to go and see that service because it's absolutely fantastic. And they have a range of training opportunities uh, 
which firefighters can take up, and that is afforded to all services in Scotland that they can all come in and use that, and that's a huge benefit um, in doing so. I know that Scottish Fire and Rescue Services have also tried wherever they can to try and make savings to reduce um, the burden on their services. And I note that just recently, uh, unwanted fire alarm signals, which can cause call-outs where they don't need to happen, uh, Western Bartonshire, uh, the service there, have worked very hard to bring those down by 23%. So that's 23% fewer times that that service has to turn out when they don't need to, which is, is important. Um, but the, the issue around funding, uh, Mr Chair, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention. So the UK Government must do the fair thing and adequately compensate Scottish Fire Police and Fire Rescue Services for the expenditure involved in contingency planning for that no-deal Brexit. We should not be out of pocket because of the decisions of this Government here. This additional expenditure um, is likely to amount to £17 million for policing costs alone, around the same amount of money that the UK Government has provided to Northern Ireland to cover their Brexit-related policing. So why should Scotland be treated any differently in this respect? This UK Government has shown political discretion in funding the devolved nations in the past, and it's deeply unfair that the people of Scotland and those struggling on the front line of emergency services should miss out. Last year, we were finally successful in finally persuading the Chancellor to stop charging VAT to emergency services in Scotland, which was an outcome uh, of moving to the single service. And this came about because of the intransigence of the UK government in fixing that. So now some have said we chose to go forward with that service. We did. The cost savings in doing so made that worthwhile. But it was a political decision by the UK government not to treat our service in the same way as Highways England are treated or other services in England. It should not have happened in the first place. And as things stand, compensation is overdue. Our emergency services paid out £175 million to the UK government before the decision to, scrape, to scrap the VAT obligation. And this could have gone right into the front line, saving lives and improving the service. Um, so, Mr Hosey, I would like to ask the UK government when they will actually uh, give us our money that we are, so, we are entitled to. If the VAT is exempted now, it should have been exempted in the first place and we are due our money back. Thank you.